Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calderness. This is episode 317. We have a special guest from our Supernova tournament. We're going to talk a little bit about the Fantastic Four set and the full set list that was dropped this week. We're going to play the game that's sweeping the nation, Bad Samaritan. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. <laughs> Like always, we're brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Uh, like always, I'm joined by my nemesis and guy who doesn't know how to run the soundboard this week, uh, Simeon Bruce. Woo! Ah, ah. That's people cheering for me. Uh, okay. I don't, I don't have that queued uh, up on okay, the Okay, sure. And joining us in the studio for the first time ever... Uh, local local gamer uh, for my game group, a winner of our Supernova online tournament, Jonah Fleming. What's going on, Jonah? Not much. What's going on, Calder? Uh, thank you. No one asked me that, Jonah. I'm actually I'm at a really good spot in my life right now. Thank you. No one ever no one ever uh, shoots that back my way. And what this good, is what why. a good guest. Uh, this is why. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so we're gonna do a quick <laughs> interview. Interview. Ooh, ah, a little little 60 minutes here. Except it's gonna be like less than six minutes uh, with Jonah, just so that people can get to know you better. So when did you first get into Hero Clicks? What was like the first set that you played? Um, I, I want to say the first set I ever played in was probably back in 2011 or 2012 with the first, or not the first, but like one of the Batman and Superman sets when they came out. Mm. And uh, from there... Yeah, from there, um, the I've been playing, mm. I think, up to 2016, and then I kind of took a break for about a year and came back in 2017 or 2018 when uh, Avengers first came out, Avengers Infinity, so. What okay, a terrible nice. time to come back. That was a what? That's really expensive set. It was weird, yeah. That was a weird set. Oh, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a bit of a... HD Realms. That set was gonna just completely destroy Heroclix. There, I don't know if you know this, Calder, but Heroclix is gone, according to the threads about that set. Uh, some days I wish it was. <laughs> <laughs> Simi, do you have a question for Jonah? Let's just do back and forth. Easiest, easiest way to do it. All you, right. You, you didn't have the questions pulled up because he doesn't have them from memory. No, no. Uh, what's your What's one of your favorite figures, Jonah? Whether it's meta or casual or whatever, what's your, what's one of your favorite figures to play? Mm. Um, I, I'd have to say uh, Ultron Phalanx from the Age of Ultron set. Uh, at 300 points, he was definitely my favorite character. I would usually just play him almost every week if we ever were doing casual. So, uh, as uh, I've as not once seen you play that figure. <laughs> well, you guys never play casual. Uh, yeah, we're <laughs> ouch. <laughs> no. Uh, did you pull him when, like, when in the sealed, or did you just get yeah. him afterwards? No, I, I pulled him in the sealed, and uh, unfortunately, we were only doing 300 points. So I'm like, well, looks like I'm having a one-man army. So did it work out for you? I always thought that like him and uh, the future Ultron, I always thought would just like stomp sealed if they got pulled. But my oh. then you never pulled him. Yeah, I actually I pulled him and the I think he was the rare one or whatever which could use uh, support on Ultron. Um, I'm, I think, I'm trying to remember, I think I went like 2-1 and one that day, only because somebody, what was it, the Hank Pym or something? I, let's see. He, yeah, I think it was, that, like, he slows Ultrons did, down, for sure. Yeah, and that was definitely a big problem. So I, I think he even told me that he purposely uh, played him just because he was thinking he was going to play me, so... Mm. People are always building against you, Jonah. Even to this day. Yeah. To this day. To this day. Yeah. I think uh, even cool. even to yesterday, at least. That's what that was implied. <laughs> yes. Um. What was? What is your favorite format? You say you like to play when you can play casually. You're playing Ultron Phoenix. What's your favorite format to play? Um. I I kind of like any format. You know. I mean, I'm always just there to have fun and have a good game and. Just play whatever they got. So I mean, I 
I'd say that recently I've liked 300 post rotation modern more, mm, only because right. there's no IDs anymore, so <laughs> I can't get pulse wave for four damage right off the bat. So or everybody for one, no matter what, yeah. regardless of reducers, yeah. yeah. And yeah. stop, yeah. You know, memorizing the back of cards was like that was really hard, but also. You know, one thing that was kind of hard for people getting into the meta was keeping track of the seven sideline figures that every team required to function. So I'm just gonna just gonna leave on that note. Uh, post rotation uh, is way easier to play <clears throat> online. For yeah. Sure. Oh my gosh! Wow. Dude. Yeah. Half the figures. Screw having ID cards. That sucked. But well, so yeah. Need, uh, Galactus on every team. So. Mm. That's true. Or, you he'll, know, he'll, he'll be easier to, to play online or... too, Simeon. Instead of having that humongous thing in real life, every single I guess, table yeah, side. You'll really just need to keep track of like the Herald dial. All right. Uh, All right keep going. So speaking of formats and stuff, uh, we know you've lost to me and Calder a lot. So what's what's one of your favorite matches where you've lost to either me or Calder? Ooh, I'd, I'd probably say uh, <laughs> recently, I think it was the, uh, what was it, the WKO we just played here in South Dakota um, against... Me and you, Simeon, and uh, you were playing like what, like twenty Wendigos or something, and like the, the four Tri Sentinels, Tri Sent, the Tri Tri Sentinel Tendigo. Yeah, <laughs> man, yeah. I was just throwing stuff at the wall and trying to get it to stick. You had me at a point deficit for most of that game, though. Oh yeah, no, I'm like, well, I should try and keep you as far away as I possibly can, and. uh it seemed to work out at first, up until I think you like just was able to pulse wave me, and gave me wounded tokens. Um, I think if you would have missed that attack, it probably would have been a lot different. But uh, other than that, um, with Calder, I think I I think I've only lost one competitive game to him, which was in top four of the, I think it was a states or something. Uh, oh. I think it was like a. Last Hold on, year, Jonah. you've lost several, actually. Jonah, I think going. we're, I think we're, we might be coming to time here. No, 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 no. Tell him, so, uh, no, no. Tell him the loss to, to me. I'm gonna have to give it back to Calder uh, mm. uh, because we're coming to time. Okay. Oh, I'm okay, sorry. Go sorry. ahead, Jonah. Yeah, yeah, I guess we've yeah. got yeah. enough time for yeah, this. Yeah, we have enough time. We have enough time for this. I'll make time. All right. All right. Uh, while I was playing my whales team with Captain Venom and two whales and a bunch of retailers, would look like Surter and. Uh, you're playing your cab resilient team, and uh, I, I don't think either of our roles were there that game, but uh, you ended up coming on top and killing all my whales. So, I mean, I think every every game we've practiced, I've always won against you with that with both of our same teams, and unfortunately, I just didn't come out on top that game. So, yeah, that's that is the way it be sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well. Is there is there anything else you want to say uh, as we finish up this interview segment before we jump on into uh, what made us happy this week? No, not really. Okay, well, fantastic. So, uh, Jonah, you're the guest. Uh, you want to start us off with what made you happy this week, my man? Oh, uh, definitely being able to play Hero Clicks. I mean, uh, usually we do casual stuff on Friday, or we just play with our local venue on Friday. But uh, being able to do it on a day where I didn't have work and just you know, being able to do it in general just made my day, so. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's uh, hard, to, hard to come by nowadays. True. I do want to say that last question was in jest, uh, because Jonah is a very capable player. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, don't, it just usually comes down to, usually comes down to dice rolls. Um, but uh, what made me happy this week was I made a, a terrible joke, uh, uh terrible little photoshop picture took me about five seconds to do threw it up on facebook threw it up on twitter it was of course of the lovely scott porter with a air bending arrow on his forehead and uh some some quote from the show i don't know if anyone would know it but uh scott porter got back to us on twitter and uh, yeah i don't know if i don't know if it made him mad i don't think it did no he's he seems like a cool dude I, hope I mean, he's from Omaha, and I live in Omaha, so I imagine that at some point, like, we'll he could go out feel the Nebraskan energy radiating from that beam. <laughs> yeah, and it drew him in. Yeah, he'll be like, he's like, hey man, you want to drink a few, like, throw back a few ranches? Want to watch a Huskers game? Yeah, and I'm like, 
you know, I'm the one that changes out the scoreboard, Scott. And he's like, <laughs> oh, really? I'm your biggest fan. I love that scoreboard. <laughs> I love I love it when our side goes up. Heck yeah, Sorry, man. Sorry, yeah. I'm not fantasizing at all, but, uh, yeah. This is like, this is your dream? This is like, this is an actual dream you had last night. It's a pretty sad dream. (laughs) Uh, Not gonna lie. Uh, what made me happy this week was, uh, super fan, supporter of the show, Lucas Van Holland, made his second best decision in his whole life, and he got married. His first best is, of course, supporting us on patreon.com slash dialyforheroclicks, <laughs> where you can come and support us as well. Check out some of the tiers uh, on there. Get entered to win a uh, Fantastic Four Cosmic Clash starter, and then some of our new cool tokens. Ones being the Lex Luthor 40 Cakes tokens and the Shawn Michaels Tuning Up the Band tokens, as well as our Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy Action tokens. But about Lucas, um, let's bring it back here. Um, besides supporting us on Patreon, which is his best decision he's made, and you can make it too, he got married last week to a really cool gal. Uh, I've known I've known them for about two-ish years, maybe one and a half-ish years. And when we would go out to eat after Hero Clicks, he would normally bring her with. And she was just, she's really fun. She's funny. They're great together. They have a really nice relationship. And that it was just great that I got to be one of his groomsmen uh, for his wedding. You know, there weren't a lot of people there in current times. So it, it felt great that we got to share that. Um, it was just a beautiful, it was a beautiful experience. Uh, the food was free, which is always a plus. Sorry, that makes it sound a little petty there, but it was pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, and then, like, and being all suited up the day WizKids went live with that, uh, what, what made us happy happened on the same day, which is great, Simeon. Uh, you made that meme after WizKids went live with their attempt uh, to open up a, a unboxing here. And me I and do all, all appreciate the, their effort. And all the groomsmen I, yeah. are, well, I do appreciate their effort, yes, to give us something in this time. But all the groomsmen were surrounded by my phone and were trying to get a screen cap of the point value slash the back of the card for Franklin Galactus's trait. And we're all huddled around. And Kevin was like, Lucas, Lucas, we, we know the point. And I'm like, wait, wait a second. Let's, he's signing his marriage papers right now. Let's, let's just wait five minutes. It was it such a, it like was, when, a, when there's people like watching a football game during a wedding. Cause I've definitely yeah. seen that too. Wedding like, crashes. like that, but uh, yeah, but both for like it really was nerdy so people. Hilarious. And like to everybody else is like, is this really that important? What does it change the game? And Lucas, not even us, Lucas, the, the groom is like, yes. Yes, it does. And I'm like, yeah, I love it. Love that deadpan. Like, yes, this is important. Um, so that was just great. That entire wedding was awesome. Everybody there, all their, both their families were really cool. So that is what made me happy this week. Let's go ahead. Enough about this stuff. We got to know Jonah. We get to know our what made us happy. Let's jump into the news. Oh, that was beautiful. That bumper was so quiet. You have no idea. I, yeah, I couldn't it, even hear it, but I'm sure you'll for fix some it reason, post. And you will for like some it. reason, played on my uh, on my speakers. But that's okay, because of... I didn't want to get into the news, actually. First, I wanted to talk about the Supernova tournament that Jonah played in. Jonah, you got two random boosters of Supernova. What was your team for the tournament, my man? Well, uh, my team was the 267-point Thanos, uh, the 25-point Scroll Infiltrator, and the, I think, 7-point uh, Four Bushman. Right. Four uh, Bushman. Four Bushman being four points, yes. Uh, yes. yes. I also played that. Yeah. So <laughs> so you had you had to be an excellent pilot because this team was not a plug-and-play team. It was not a point-and-shoot team. It wasn't easy at all to play. So what was your masterminded beautiful strategy that brought you to the end end table here for this tournament. also which uh which better figures did you pass up to play this yes one? um i think it was the i think experienced she hulk um oh man i want to say the weapon alpha I can't, I can't remember which one it was it was like the charge nine attack three damage one uh, yes weapon alpha charge yeah. nine attack and you you just threw that to the wind okay yeah. Yeah. Um, Very bold strategy. It was the veteran sh- uh, sage, I think, and uh, I'm trying to remember what else. Oh, a- you had the rookie Doctor Spectrum. Don't forget about oh, him. Oh yeah. That nine and attack running sp- shot. Yeah, Space Phantom. Uh, Space Phantom. You also had yep. Nocturne, who was oh, uh, yeah. just leap climb ESD. Who who can forget about such an amazing top dial? And uh, Sunspot too. Sunspot. Yep. 
Sunspot as well. Uh, you gave up a lot just to field Thanos. Did you Did you feel confident? Obviously, it worked well for you, but were you shaking your boots a little bit that you didn't have the nine attack, willpower, super strength, two damage <laughs> yeah. of Sunspot? Uh, yeah. Thanos does not have leap climb top dial, is that correct? Yeah. Were you a little yeah, worried that, that Thanos only had phasing and not leap climb? Yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, I at first I was uh, I was wondering. Well, I mean, it, it could go either way. I mean, he does have outwit and pen size, so either way, if you come up close or go at him from range, you're still gonna get hit for damage either way. So I'll I'll be able to go straight through you. I mean, unless you have power cosmic, but uh, seeing the other poles, there was only one other character that had power cosmic, which was the uh, veteran uh, silver surfer. And uh, I did I did play him first round. So what my what my strategy was was to move up um, these scroll infiltrator and then put him on a heavy object because he has stealth first click. Like I think every click he does. So uh, and then body block him or body block Thanos with the scroll and the uh, four bushman. So it'd be harder to shoot at Thanos even if he tried, but. Uh, they surprisingly are pretty strong. I mean, for Bushman, he has, like, what, five movement, five attack, and zero damage, but he has 17 defense, which, up close, like, he, he's hard to take down in the set. I mean, almost every character is at, like, a nine attack or ten attack. So, uh... And then, uh, second turn, I would move up um, with the Scroll Infiltrator, because he has, what, nine movement, I think, and uh, he'd basically just be uh, sitting there trying to keep people away from Thanos so Thanos can just side blast you for four damage and uh, um, yeah he's, he's pretty tough he's got shape change and he's got combat reflexes um, and even if you do take him down I mean he's still he's mostly going to be on click five because I think he's he's got he's gotten KO'd every round I think but he's always been down on a click five every round hmm. so uh, either way, he's got the scroll TA, so shape change, and yeah, he's he's kind of just a tie-up piece. Same with uh, the four Bushman. He's got a 17 defense, but he's 7 movement in the space train, and uh, is mostly just kind of body block for Thanos and then keep people tied up so Thanos can just shoot at you. All right. You said, I uh, you were worried about not having any support, but at what yeah. point in the tournament did you realize that a 13 attack pen side four damage outwit was a uh, was enough support to get you by i i would have to say the i'd have to say the second round i think the first round was a little bit harder because uh it took me like two or three turns to ko his uh scroll oh was it the scroll warrior i know it was the yeah it was the scroll warrior um but okay. after that i was I, we we both had power cosmic first first uh first round but um so i couldn't outwit him but i could out with the scrolls uh uh super strength so he couldn't hit me for any damage but he'd have to crit hit me so mm. um definitely i'd say the second round was where it really hit me that i'm like oh Thanos can probably just take everybody by himself and, right but okay nice is there anything else you have to say about the uh tournament in general or any of your games yeah playing with um, these older figures does it make you wish that you uh played back then or does it make you want to grab some of like these uh real real golden age figures for casual stuff i i would probably just say if i if i had to pick up the set it'd probably just be to go chase those zombies so mm. yeah i mean just like As everybody a great else man once said yeah yeah i mean uh they're pretty i mean i'd, I'd probably just keep them Instead of like selling them or anything, I mean, I know they're pretty spendy, but uh, I'd probably just keep them. I mean, they're really cool. Yeah, they make great shelf pieces for sure. That's what I think most of the, like the older stuff like that is. Like Thanos is cool with a thirteen pensai, but he still doesn't quite hold up by today's standards, especially with his point cost. Oh um, yeah, yeah. But it's it's still cool, like the seeing like those really old sculpts, and uh, some of them are pretty decent. Oh, yeah, some of them are even used today. I mean, um, I was trying to look at... I know some of them... Uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember which characters I saw, but uh, I know a lot of the um, LEs and monthly OP kit characters are used from old sculpts from other sets. So I, I just really thought that was interesting. 
Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and there's still like some if you like are for whatever reason have it's like some of those boosters. There's still like some really cheap team abilities that you can wild card, and some really cheap like support powers that you can use on pretty much any any team, and it still works out all right. Yeah. And so, how'd you feel doing a sealed tournament, but instead it was online sealed? How do you think that process was? Um, I'm like, well, I was kind of wondering how it would go down, but when you said it was kind of doing a live video, I'm like, well, okay, I, I could, I could handle that. But uh, depending on how well you would have showed the characters, I'd probably have to go back and like look at the specific characters and see which ones I pulled. But uh, I mean, yeah, I thought it went pretty well, so. If I could do it again, I'd, I'd probably do it again. So. Okay. Do you recommend Dial H for Heroflix tournaments to anyone that would want to uh, compete in such a tournament? Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed okay, it. Sweet. I wasn't, like, by pandering. I am genuinely, like, <laughs> if we ran the tournament well enough type deal. Because, you know, I don't run a lot of tournaments. I'm, I'm, I really am curious about how people feel about them. No, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty fun. All right, sweet. Well, I'm pretty much good on tournament talk. What about you, Simeon? I think I'm good, yeah. Cool. You want to try to hit that news bumper one more time for me, baby? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if it works this time. Hey, good job. It did. It's perfect. Uh, Before we get into Fantastic Four news, which is like the biggest, coolest news we love... Uh, I'm going to just shout out to Critical Clicks Podcast. Their their own PJ Bowen is doing a tournament. And it's just it's a really unique format, so I wanted to discuss it really quickly before we jump into the rest of the news. So it is like shaping up not right now to be the biggest online tournament ever. There's, there's no player cap, so there's like 70 people signed up for it right now. And uh, go sign up for it if you think it's cool as well. It's five bucks to enter. There's going to be a loser's bracket as well. There's going to be a loser's bracket, which is pretty huge. So, like, when me and Simeon lose, I don't know if Simeon signed up or not, but, like, when we lose the very first round and don't get to actually play the tournament out to where it's going to be fun, you know, the the first round is going to be the worst round. I 100% agree, because then it's just modern, which sucks. Uh, But before, sorry, you guys don't know what the tournament is. Maybe you do, but let me explain it to you what it is. So, it is going to be, there's going to be a ban list after every round. So, every single figure that was on a winning team last round and the map that they won on is going to be banned. All right? No one can build out of any of those teams. So, out of, let's say there's 68 people right now, 70, whatever. So, out of 70, 35 teams are going to move forward. 35 people are going to lose. And then, whatever was on those teams, whether it be, you know, there's three or four Vulture teams, five or six Jason teams, Jason and Vulture aren't played. You know, anyone that uses a Star Labs person for Perplex, whatever, they can't be played. It'll just, they're instantly banned. And he's going to have a ban list, which is going to be a lot of work for PJ and everybody running it, for sure. Uh, to keep track of all the figures, the ban list and everything. Um, and basically, that, I think that's really cool. So after the first round, it's banned. So, like, eventually, people are going to be playing, like... Garbage. Pepper. Like maybe like straight up like they're gonna be like I yeah. got Trish Stratus on my team and it's like what? You have who? <laughs> you know like that's like what it's gonna be in later rounds. You know it's like oh, I have this crazy secret um, combo. It'll be like and I yeah, just got lucky like enough sealed. that Trish Stratus and Prez Ricard are still playable or, or something. I doubt. Singularity. <laughs> yeah. 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 Singularity and Trish Stratus are the next you know chick kick cosmic kick whatever like whatever is going on. I think that's gonna be hilarious. You know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I can finally play like this figure, that figure. Oh, I can't wait. You know, like that, that's good. It's going to be fun. It is going to be great. It's going to make other figures shine. And it's basically, um, it's basically how I like to play where it's like, I'm playing figures that aren't necessarily the best they can be, but I just play them because I like them. But now competitive people that can only help, but play the best because they don't know how to have fun, have to play only (laughs) bad figures and it's like, this They're is literally play, yeah. a format that I would normally do. Like, you don't think I want to play just three 100-point, like, I don't know, Shazams or something, right? Like, that's it's it's a bad team, but I'm just going to stay still and defense I mean, it's up, a right? it's a format whereby round three, 300-point uh, juggernaut might have a shot. So. Yeah. 
you know, uh, if someone doesn't waste him at like 100 points earlier in yeah. the race type deal. So it's really cool. I really like it. It's, it's going to force these guys. They're going to think it's fun. This is what blows my mind. Like, And I'm not saying like all competitive players, whatever. Not all of them are this way, but like they're going to play bad teams that they wouldn't normally play. And they're going to think it's fun, despite the fact casual people just want to play those teams normally and uh, not have you play whatever. But then they literally yeah. cannot play the best thing. So it's like once you absolutely have to restrict them from doing that, now they're going to get more creative and I'm really going to enjoy it. This isn't me just dogging on competitive people. I love playing competitive. I think it's really fun. Um, okay, I don't love it. Let me take that back. I enjoy playing competitive sometimes. I think it's <laughs> sometimes fun. So I, I, I love the idea. Like a, I love the format it's... of the idea of making these guys flex their hero clicks team building muscle when it gets down there. Especially having yeah. a 48 hour build turnaround time is going to be cool. And this tournament's going to take like two or three months, by the way. Just like for the sheer amount of people. It's going to be insane. Right. It's a commitment. I uh, I do like that it's kind of it's kind of what I've suggested for like whiz kids, but like in a much more aggressive format. Um, so like I've said a few times that I think whatever wins like nationals or worlds, you just put all of those characters on a ban list for the next nationals or worlds, or like just for like for like the rest of the year like at tournaments like those figures aren't to be used. I wouldn't mind clearly the top eight. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. I mean, it just opens up, like, you know, if you can't play, like, all these, like, real cheap support pieces, you're going to have to, like, stretch to get, like, a little bit better or maybe, like, a little bit uh, a little bit better at building or you're just going to have to, like, forego some of the better powers and stuff and just deal with what you have to deal with. And I, that's what most people do in this game, I believe. Nobody really, like, min-maxes outside of the competitive scene. But uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, exactly. Jonah, what do you think about this uh, tournament? And are you going to play? Uh, I don't think I am. But uh, I I think it could get interesting. I mean, you're going to see a lot of the new stuff like Batman and uh, the uh, Dr. Fates and uh, the Black Widow chase. I mean, there's a lot of interesting characters they could also see being used i mean i think nimrod might be the sleeper of the entire tournament i mean i don't think anybody would play him right off the bat but uh later I saw, like i think oh. a solid round two definitely round three yeah yeah getting played yeah so or any just any of the sentinels in general i mean yeah. i i could see a uh hey, a a good and, keyword. robot and, and sentinel is a great keyword I, yeah. I don't oh, yeah. see that being lost uh, round one, honestly. I think Sentinel's great. Yeah, I think well, especially Exodus with and the... Bastion are two underrated 2 by 2s from that set. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah. all right, if we're, if we're done talking about it, uh, like I said, just to reiterate, guys, go check that out. There's a clicks cast. Uh, it's not a page. It's a group on Facebook. Check it out. I don't know when they close signups, but... Uh, go check it out. By the time you hear this, I don't think signups are going to be over anyway. So, yeah, go check that out. PJ Bowen's hosting it. He's um, yeah, he's all right, dude. I haven't talked to him that much. He's all right, dude. I, well, I can't speak. I can't speak. He seems pretty cool. seems like a cool guy. Seems like I don't think guy. I've ever talked to him uh, outside like, of, like, to Facebook. Like once, once, I've definitely maybe. trash-talked him like, on Facebook. No, he's a cool but, guy. But uh, who he doesn't? Like, you know, seems like a cool dude. A little, little ginger man. Yeah, he seems cool. Seems cool to me. Um, All right, yeah, moving on. Fantastic Four full set list is released. Simeon, thoughts, opinions, other? Um, I don't know. What do you think about the full you know, Fantastic Four set? The Fantastic Four is back, and we have half the set to figures we could have made while the Fantastic Four was gone. So how do you feel about that? Sorry, I interjected my opinion. My bad. Simeon. So I'll, I'll start with, like, the good stuff. I'll yeah. start with, like, what, what I'm happy about. What I'm really happy about is seeing, like, multiple characters that we haven't gotten in a long time and that I'm hoping are going to be good. I'm glad that I'm finally going to be able to fill out my, well, I'm mostly going to be able to fill out my Secret Wars Battle World keyword set. Um, so we're going to get a God Emperor Doom, the uh, Susan Doom, the Valeria Doom, Franklin Doom, for some reason the Maker, um, and then of course Reed Richards, who was, you know, the good guy, I guess, in the story, uh, depending on your perspective. But um, we, we're still missing probably 
the most important person of that entire storyline. Uh, and that is Owen Reed, the molecule man. For some reason, he doesn't appear in the set. He's not one of the bystanders on the tokens. I'd be kind of mad if he was. Uh, maybe he'll be a con exclusive or something down the line. But I don't know how you don't put in like the literal power source of Battleworld into a set that's like, you know, the chase set that's finishing that out. Um, I'm really glad that we're getting some generic scrolls and some generic moloids. Uh, I'm really glad that we're getting some doom bots. That'll like, there's plenty of figures that can bring those in. That'll be great. Uh, I'm really glad that I'm getting a rare hydro man. That'll be cheap enough. And I'll actually be able to like own one for once. Um, another super rare Wolverine. Cause I always want my Wolverine to be a super rare. Mm -hmm. So, those are things that I really like. Uh, I, I really know like how much that... you hate easy access to your favorite character. <laughs> yeah, I really like that uh, a nihilist has like uh, two high point dials. He's 125 points or 175, and then Super Scroll is making his return. Uh, and we've got we finally are getting the new Karnak. Uh, that book's been out for at least five years, I think, and uh, we're finally getting. You know, that's the um, Moody Hood hipster yeah Karnak, right he yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of looks like uh iron fist from the netflix series mm. or than more than like karnak from most comics but that's fine uh so, okay yeah yeah keep going yeah so there's i mean there's a lot of stuff to like about the set the inhumans look really cool uh for the most part they look real sol solid um throwback sculpt on fire lord is cool um but yeah which is the only thing that's throwback about him yeah, that's that's the stuff I like about the set. Um, the stuff I don't quite like yeah, about the set. Yeah, the stuff you hate. Give me the negative. That's what I want to hear. Oof. Um, so not only is like the Fantastic Four in there multiple times, which like of course they should be, uh, they're just like resculpted for the most part with like slightly different paint jobs, which I'm fine with. Except there's no Future Foundation. There's no Ultimates um, outside of the Maker. Uh, there, there's hardly any of like the future foundation, like kids, there's Valeria and there's Franklin and there's no Bentley. There's, I mean, there's no purple dragon man from when he's on the future foundation. We mm -hmm. just have a super rare that, you know, was like the, the bad guy one. Um, there's also like only a few, is there only two earth X guys in this? There are, this is what hurts me the most probably is the fact there are only two earth X characters in the whole thing. Um, they are both the two alive members of the fantastic four during earth X, which is the thing and Mr. Fantastic. But there are some, uh, several surround. And then of course, um, Chuck and whoever, <laughs> the, the other son, uh, are pogs, yeah. uh, for the thing, which is cool. But so, there are surrounding characters. I'm sorry, I'm going to interject your opinion here really quick, <laughs> just to because we're on Earth X. Uh, yeah. I'm going to have to bring it up again. But uh, Wyatt Wingfoot is a reoccurring normal, like friend of the Fantastic Four in normal comics, but then he is the new Falcon in Earth X. And I collect all the Native American characters that yeah. make in Hero Clicks, Wyatt Wingfoot being Native American. And I think it's awesome that he, he also ought to be hangs Falcon. out with. Uh... Earth X Captain America, like yes, starting he, off he, the first he comic, was, he yeah, appears yeah. right next to him. He's the sidekick of Earth X Cap when Cap is still struggling with the whole mind control and like everything else, right? Like it's it's so cool. White Wingfoot plays a very pivotal role, um, and it's such a huge bummer that we don't have him as the Falcon when he could have easily been put in Earth X. And if he was maybe kept by the whatever you know the whole embargo against the Fantastic Four. Uh, well, because he was a supporting character in normal comics, well, then this would have been the perfect time, since you already have Earth-X figures here, uh, to give us a Wyatt Wingfoot uh, Earth-X version, which is this yeah. really cool uh, version of the Falcon, which I absolutely love. And it, it really hurts he wasn't Earth-X, and it really hurts that he's not here. Uh, keep going, Simeon. Um, okay, so I'm going to get into like sculpt reuse for a little bit. Mm. Uh, the thing here, as you know, the thing, he just wears shorts. So we have three things in the set, not not in count, like countering, uh, not uh, including, sorry, the uh, starter set uh, thing and the sweater thing, yeah, the Earth X one. We have three things, uh, common, uncommon, and rare, with just slightly different colored shorts. Uh, of course, like one's got like the 2014 run of the Fantastic Four with his red shorts. 
again, like no Future Foundation, there was a really cool storyline where the Future Foundation did something that Reed couldn't, and they found a way to turn uh, Ben Grimm back into a human, but he could only do it like one day out of the year. And so because he could turn back into human, a human, uh, he would age, but he aged at such a slow rate, like one day per year for like normal people, that they would show thing like throughout the decades and even like I think he like goes out to like you know like three thousand years and he's got this like really long like rust kind of beard thing and he's just like he's like with the the last golden age superhero that's still around in the future because of this like formula that they made for him and that's like a really cool storyline. Um, there's also there's no Ben Grimm before he's the thing, which like would have been an easy thing to just like throw in as like a common or something. Um, oh, like a pilot and then, Ben Grimm type deal. An- yeah. An- yeah. Another thing I really am not digging is the sculptor use on the primes. Um, so Silver Surfer is the rare prime. His sculpt like it's literally we've got so many Silver Surfers. Uh, well, no, we don't. We've got so many versions of the Silver Surfer in comics is what I mean. That uh, the fact that the only difference that we can see in the sculpt is like the speckles on the effect coming off of his board, his like power cosmic. That's like the only difference in the sculpt really kind of annoys me. Um, could have done like silver savage. You could have done mm, uh, awesome. silver surfer black from like the, the newest kind of like series, what he's doing with like Thor and uh, all that stuff. Um, the uncommon prime is the punisher robots the galactus robots i guess um so we've got punisher robot and then the prime is also punisher robot uh it's like a cool throwback character i suppose but like man you could have done a prime of fire lord you could have done a prime of i don't know the uh which ghost rider is that is that uh robbie reyes yeah yeah an uncommon slot yeah the cool mask yeah yeah it's robbie and Speaking of Robbie, or and speaking of Ghost Rider, the Super Rare Prime is Alejandro Blaze on a motorcycle, and then the Non Prime is just Alejandro Blaze not on the motorcycle. And I don't know why they gave one figure yeah. in this set a peanut base, and they didn't reuse. Literally, you have a flaming bike. You could have just reused that flaming bike sculpt for another of the like several uh, Ghost Riders that you included. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess it wouldn't have made sense for Robbie Ray is because he drives a car, but uh, there is like a catch, Danny in there. So isn't there always a catch though, Simeon? Yeah, um, yep, yep. Ayo. Um, I just hope this. I guess I'll leave it on this. I really hope this Amadeus Cho Hulk is better than the ADW one because I didn't really care for that one that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I really hope that God Doom is something cool. Which, All the chases have been good so far. Yeah, so. Uh, Sue Storm being like kind of the outlier for a hundred yeah. points compared to the thirty and yeah. seventy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so if God Doom is like three hundred, and for some reason they don't make him twice as good, or I guess that'd be what like four times as good as the Franklin's like stop click. Yeah. Like for the same points, you can have Franklin at seventy. So if God Doom at three hundred doesn't have you know some crazy stuff going on i'm gonna i'm gonna be mad but i'm still gonna mm-hmm. want it um, also why why the maker why is he a chase you know what he did in secret wars a whole lot of do? nothing okay a whole lot of nothing but what did like, you do to start he, secret wars simeon he, he caused thought. it you know well he no i mean look at that hat he he was in the ultimate universe he uh he did neck. sacrifice uh ultimate nick fury so that he could get away from the exploding universe. And so that's kind of a cool scene. Um, he also tried to kill Reed Richards by turning him into, or like reverse evolutionizing him and turning him into like a weird ape thing. Monkey. Yep. Yeah. Mm, monkey. Monkey. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm going to talk about what I like that they did correct, and then I'm also going to poo poo on the set. Because it's fun to do. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of hate the Fantastic Four. 
Uh, for anyone that doesn't watch the Cosmic Clash starter set video on our YouTube channel, check it out. At least watch the first 10 seconds. I worked really hard on that. It was, yeah. it was really You want to see Calder snap. Very entertaining. Snap three characters yep. away from existence. Yep. <laughs> That's what I did. It was pretty good. Uh, I am inevitable. Anyways, uh, what they did right was the Cosmic Clash starter set sculpts are all unique to the Cosmic Clash starter set. And the Fantastic Four, even though they reused the sculpts three times uh, for them in this set, they're all their own for this set. Even though, like, Sue is awful, who's standing there looking terrible. And then they just changed the color of Reed and Sue's suits, Ben's pants. Uh, Johnny at least gets different versions of how he's drawn in the comics where it's like the thick yeah. red and then he's different more amounts of flame on. Yeah. Yeah. So like that's how flame that's cool on that is the he... cosmic clash ones are stuck in the cosmic clash. Like that is specifically who they are. Um, wacky arms. Reed is just his pose for even the different sculpts of Reed. It's just old wacky arms. Reed. That's all we get. I, I can't wait to see those chases uh, arms snap off by the way. Um, they just yeah. seem less. They just seem less. Just like uh, thick wheeling. Other ones. I'm 100 percent um, sure that's a move that he pulls off in uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, just, where he just like what is, swings his arm wildly in like a arms, man. pinwheel motion. Um, they said, "Let's get who who wants to take a lift or something like that." When they first showed Firestorm's sculpt, which was a great callback um, to the first dial and how they worked at the times, but this Firestorm does absolutely nothing like that. He's just a whatever piece. He doesn't even have the same stats, which would have been cool. Um, he's not yeah. at all a callback piece, except for the fact that his sculpt is sort of the same. That's it. That is it. Um, heck, he if they would have gave him a flight terrible. base, I would have thought that had been cooler. Um, <laughs> but like, but they made it feel like he was going to be a callback, and he just isn't. He's just, like, he's just a Fire Lord. Like, that's it. Um, the thing I, I hate, I'm okay with the Frightful Four. They are very specific versions of those characters that fought the Fantastic Four. That's fine. The thing I don't like is you could have made uh, Agent Venom, Miss Marvel, Hulk, Amadeus Cho Hulk, Red Hulk, uh, any of these Ghost Riders, Silk, Wolverine, X-23. You could have made all of those in a non-Fantastic Four set. I understand these are the Fantastic Four versions, but you could have given us those versions in, I don't know, I think there's a Spider-Man set coming up that you could have given us that version of Spider-Man, Silk, and Agent Venom. I also think there's an X-Men set coming up where you could have given us that version of Wolverines, both of them, stuff like that. Like, you could have given us these versions in those sets. Same thing with the Inhumans. Um... Why didn't we get this Karnak in the last uh, Avengers Black Panther and Illuminati set, right? He doesn't fit in this set because he doesn't share the classic look of the Inhumans like uh, Gorgon and Medusa do. So he, he's an Inhuman, sure, but he's not the Golden Age version. So, like, he just he's a sore thumb in this set. All these figures, right? Um, figures that may be related to the Fantastic Four, but they could have been made without actually having the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. That being said, figures that I wanted to see in the set besides Wyatt Wingfoot, I really just wanted characters that they leave out of sets that I like. So uh, Fear Itself, I love that storyline. I love the tie-ins. I really liked the Fearful Four storyline with Howard the Duck, She-Hulk, uh, Nighthawk, and Frankenstein's Monster, where they fight Psycho Man. I really wanted Psycho Man to be made in the set. He's missing. And they kind of, you know, they call themselves the Fearful Four, and they actually fight the Spider-Man, Wolverine, Hulk, Ghost Rider versions of the Fantastic Four. So I would have thought this would have been a perfect set to put them in. We aren't going to have a modern She-Hulk anymore, and the one... Oh, yes, we are. Sorry. But we we're not going to have a Fantastic Four-style She-Hulk, and we are not. We haven't had a Nighthawk in forever, you know? And we also... Well, ADW. We haven't had a Frankenstein's yeah, Monster yeah. in forever, and we haven't had a Howard the Duck since... Uh, there was no Nighthawk in ADW. That was... And Deadpool the Duck? No. <laughs> Yeah, well, Deadpool the Duck, uh, <laughs> yes, but... Not, not there, but he's there yeah. now. But, uh, like, those are figures that I wanted in this set. Now, the only reason I'm going to buy any of this set is because, like, the chases are good. You know, I didn't buy any of JLU. I probably, like, I'm not even a DC fan, but I probably wanted more of JLU than I want of this set. Just, like, just as, like, a fact, honestly. And I'm a Marvel fan. I know I'm not a Fantastic Four fan, and you guys say, well, I'm sorry we didn't put all this Fantastic Four in this set because we want to make it interesting for people that don't like the Fantastic Four. I kind of hate the Fantastic Four, and uh, the only reason I'm not buying this set is because you put all this uh, Red Hulk, X-Men, Spider-Man, 
inhuman garbage in the set. And that makes me not want to buy it. So congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> that that being say, said, there are figures I want in this set, but not enough yeah. to warrant me getting a brick. I So when I determine, and this goes for like anyone listening that's like uh, trying to figure out whether they want a brick or a case or whatever, and this goes for any set, when I'm determining whether I want to spend the money on a brick or a case... I don't look at the super rares and chases because you don't know which ones you're going to get. So you might be like, oh man, what if I get the exact three super rares that I want and the exact chase that I really want? Like, probably not going to happen, to be honest. It might. It might work out for you. What you need to look at is the common, uncommons, and rares and see if there's enough generics or enough, like, low point duplicates that you want to keep. So. If I'm looking at like this uh, little Moloy dude, and I'm like, I could probably pull like five of him in a brick, and he's ten points, and I really want to run a Moloid army with Mole Man, uh, then like, yeah, maybe a brick is worth it. If you want like twenty of those guys, then you're probably gonna have to do like a case or buy a bunch on like secondary market for a little bit of a markup, and you'll probably be saving money there. You can probably trade some of your extras for those. Um, but there's not a ton of generics going around other than scrolls, doombots, and moloids, and people are going to be holding on to those doombots like, oh, I yeah. mean, probably as tight as like super rares. To be honest, uh, everybody loves a good doombot, and that one's actually pretty solid. Um, but I'll I'll leave it on like this for my opinion of this set. Since Fantastic Four is back in HeroClix, uh, they will be able to add whatever. I feel like they are missing from this set into future sets, regardless of whether it's like an Avenger or X-Men themed set. It looks like we'll just be able to have whatever figures and whatever sets now. And that's pretty cool. Um, that being said, I'm guessing that the next Spider-Man set probably won't have any fantastic four, but um, oh, yeah, I mean, maybe further down the line, like we'll get, we'll get it filled out. Eventually we'll get all of the characters that we want. Like, we got, like, three heralds in this set. Uh, one, two, three, maybe four heralds in this set. It would have been really cool to just get all of them. And, like, the I mean, especially since Galactus is, you know, he's coming. inbound. He's coming. Oh, boy, yeah. he's coming. Yeah. So, I'll leave it with that. I'd, I'd like to finish out the heralds at some point, whether they're LEs or whatever. Yeah. Jonah, what do you think about the Fantastic Four set? Well, um, I think there's a lot of great pieces in the set. I mean, there's a lot of garbage stuff, too. Um, um, I feel like for sealed events and stuff, I feel like it could be a pretty good set. I mean, there's obviously, uh, if you pull God Doom, you, you're going to have a hard time be, uh, not, I guess, playing against him. But uh, otherwise, you'll be well off. Um also, just with meta pieces, I mean, Black Leopard, I feel like he's going to be pretty meta. Um, especially, I know he has the Wakanda keyword, so, I mean, there's a lot of Wakanda pieces out there. Um, Some solid Wakanda teams, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Wakanda being the best, yeah. And especially against other teams that give you, like, 15 perplexes and a bunch of different stat modifiers. I mean, with him, you basically are stuck at a 10 attack, 3 damage, 17 defense, and... Uh, yeah. Well, let's I mean, get there's... into his dial. Um, so, Clickstaff was yes. Clickstaff uh, previewed three figures: Black Leopard, Claw, and Franklin Von Doom. Jonah, do you want to get into Black Leopard's dial and what he does? Yeah. Um, so, let's see here. I'm trying to find his <laughs> dial right now. He's number zero one three B in the set, and he's the yep, prime. I found him common yeah um so he starts off uh he's he starts off with uh 10 movement 10 attack 17 defense 3 damage uh he's got charge blades combat reflexes and a special damage power with leadership and flex um i feel like he, that would be pretty useful for a wakanda team or just any team in general if you were to put him with avengers i mean very very solid piece um Basically, uh, you any other character on the opposing team within six squares in line of fire of him, uh, they have to just be exactly like Black Leopard stats. I mean, can't go above it. So, any team, I, again, any team that uh, has 
a huge amount of perplexes is screwed. I mean, they're they're just stuck working with a ten attack and seventeen defense and three damage. Yeah, even just high like base printed uh, attack and damage or whatever. Um, there's a few like twelve for four guys out there that are fairly common, but that seventeen with combat reflexes top dial means that you know he's harder to hit from close, but your opponents probably don't have combat reflexes like maybe they've got impervious or uh in- invincible or something like that and man is a 17 going to be easy to hit when uh you've got your own perplex with this guy yeah i mean i would say the only thing that can really counter him is uh i, I would say ancient hold map or just any map in general with tons of blocking with uh, move and attack like hypersonic i know the uh the new uh, Silver Surfer from the Cosmic Clash starter set, I, he'd be pretty good against this guy because uh, he's he's stuck at um, Pulse Waving, Hypersonic and Pulse Wave him. Um, anybody with Stealth, I would say, because he can't see through Stealth. So if you, if you got Stealth, you're, you could just sit there and shoot him. Yeah, or if you outrange him, if you outrange that six squares, um, yeah. staying seven away, so like Cyclops could still be like a... Like, an old ID call in Cyclops could be, like, a 14 and shoot at this guy still. Yeah, I mean, it, it shuts down a lot of pieces. I mean, especially modern stuff like Wendigos and uh, I think I think Dr. Fates. What, do they have a 5 or 6 range? Even Batman. I mean, you, you move um, him up here, you get, uh, like, Voyager or even the uh, Storm from the... Uh, it's a... OP kit storm, uh, you get him up there and you get next to Batman, he's screwed. He can't get past that 10 attack and you just get up close and uh, just hold him there. So I'd say, yeah, he's he's a pretty good piece. Yeah, coming in at 50 points and um, yeah, that storm would give him stealth. So that's always like an option, especially with the Wakanda team. Uh, I, I really like everything about him other than the fact that uh i mean just the fact that it's six squares and line of fire does mean that like it's potential that you'll get popped before you get into place but on a right team i think he'll be all right and he does take up your prime slot but but, i mean honestly how many how many primes do you have on an avengers team i mean yeah and that's that's another thing. Like on my current Avengers team build, um, he'd nerf it pretty hard, especially since he's a close combat piece. Like uh, I could still get to him first, but I'd have to roll sevens, and uh, like and that's if I can outwit his combat reflexes. I'd have to roll sevens, and I'd have to do three damage a time. So there's no one shotting this guy from close range with any with any piece because he's going to give you that three damage. Um, so he's got some stability because of that, if you can somehow manage to, you know, make a big, what, like six damage hit from, uh, over six squares away, then, then you're okay. But there's not a lot of characters that can do that. Um, especially if you win map with a decent Wakanda or Avenger build. Yeah, I mean, I would say the, a good range piece would probably be the Doctor Doom from the new set. Um, I think uh, Mark from Batman could handle him pretty well. The Super Senses being the only problem Batman is going to have, basically. We also got to win Since map, can though. see him way far away. Yeah, I mean, that's correct. Ob- obviously, if you win map against this guy, um, choose a clear map if you have a plan to snipe him, or a really blocked-in map like you said, Jonah, if it works. Yeah. Like, yeah. Does something, that either, keywords, though, so. something that either hurts his line of fire or helps your own, yes. uh, depending on your build. Yeah. No, but I, I hate it when WizKids makes figures like this when they would have been so much better. Like, uh, when Unimind was still a thing, this would have been great. Like, perfect, yeah. like beautiful counter when there's outrageous modification. And, you know, now there isn't really any crazy outrageous modification. I'm saying that. I haven't played any post-rotation games in months, right? But we now we have two figures that can stop crazy stat modification and pick a power right well one stops crazy stat mods and pick a power and then one just stops crazy stat mods 
well, that doesn't really matter anymore because the crazy stat mod pick a power guy is gone. But I forcing, mean, I mean, yeah, forcing yeah, your yeah. opponent to uh, roll sevens within still six in line solid. of fire is like it's real solid. Um, one thing that I really hate about this guy is for fifty points on a, I mean, fifty points is a small amount towards a seven hundred and fifty point build, and uh, if you flush your team out with some other kind of jank that's similar to this uh that new galactus is just awful if this yeah, guy gets close true. um galactus with a, a 10 17 3 so like all this guy has to do is get close to him and he's got zero speed top dial uh so galactus does i guess i don't know if it does i don't think it positively modifies anything the maximum yeah so it wouldn't positively modify any of Galactus's stuff. So Galactus would have to shoot at this guy a 10 for 3 if you can, you know, phase him up there. And you should be able to if you win map. So you should be able to get the drop on him and just drop him down to terrible stats right away. And then at best, he's going to be able to hit you for 3 and then put you on that super senses and then try and hit you again. Oh yeah, even on the super senses, he's still stuck at a nine attack. I mean, you need an eight to hit. I mean, yeah, it's possible, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's unlikely. And, and uh, this black pant or black leopard, he can perplex up his own defense the entire time. Um, but yeah, it's it goes off of uh, black leopard's printed values. So black leopard could have an eighteen his whole dial, except for his last two clicks. He'd have an eighteen most of his dial while your opponent's rocking a 17 with 10s and 9s. And it's pretty rough. Pretty rough for old Galactus, eater of worlds. Wasn't expecting T'Challa to be there and ruin his day, apparently. Okay. Well, moving on to figure I kind of want to talk about. Dr. Richards. I love Earth-X, um, and I really like Dr. Richards in the set. We've seen his front card for months now. Yes. Most of us have seen his card for months now, anyways. Yep. yep. It was out there for a while. Mm-hmm. Months. A real long time. Front front of the card, not not news. Anyways, uh, but <laughs> recently he was the first booster in the WizKids unboxing they did Friday, like I said before. And we were all huddled around. We're like, oh, yo, what is, what's he got? So he has a crazy cool 19 defense top dial. This is all from memory, by the way, guys. I don't have it. Pretty solid. 19 invincible, uh, yeah. Yeah, 19 Invincible top dial, which is awesome. He is 100 points, we found out. So, yes, he can bring in Galactus. You would need, like, I think two of this guy. Based on how Jason's worded, you need him on the sideline as well. Yes. So, you need two of this guy. Also not unique, so. He's also not unique, which is great. Um, For running Jason, not great. So, people didn't want him to be under 150 points unless there was some sort of caveat with bringing in the Franklin Galactus. Now, we did just see Franklin Galactus this last week. He is a 0 movement, 10 range, 12 attack, pulse wave, 20 defense impervious, and 5 damage with power cosmic and a trait. Uh, We also saw Chuck and Buzz, Alicia Grimm, the second maker pog, and Dawn Greenwood. I don't know if you know who Dawn Greenwood is. Side tangent, she was from the new Silver Surfer series a few years back. Really cool side character. I, I enjoyed that series. Art was weird. But it was stylistic, I guess, so it's fine. She's the new, the cool. new Pip the Troll, just like hanging out with Surfer. Basically, she's vibing. Anyways, so we were, we were worried because Galactus has crazy good stats, right? Even if you can't pulse away, whatever, he's still 12 for 5, 20 defense. Like, stats are great. They're beautiful. So we're, we're, just, we're worried that whatever, Jason's going to be able to bring him in and it's broken. So at the very least, like we were trying to get these blurry, blurry pictures and we finally get one. And I'm like, unless Dr. Richards is on the map... KO Franklin Galactus. This is fine. It's a fair enough balance that I don't think anyone can really be mad at. So if you want to play a Jason team, you have to have Dr. Frank, Dr. Richards on the map, and that's the only way you can bring in Galactus. So he has to be there, otherwise Galactus just dies, and you just a pog just dies, right? Yeah. It's a, it's upon any action resolving. Upon so any yeah, after action resolve. That's include just, Jason's free action to bring the yep. pog in. Once that resolves, like after the pog is on the map and it resolves, if Richards is not on the map, then you have to KO it. So yep. there is no like bringing it in for one attack or anything like that. Uh, you will have to have Dr. Richards on your team. And we all kind of came to the consensus that, yeah, that's pretty fair. 
So every Jason build, if they want to use this, is going to start at 175 points. Uh, also, his plus 10 trait, which is whenever a friendly character is targeted by Perplex, Outwit, or Prob. I, don't, I can't remember if it's roll a d6 or not. I don't just top of my head. But you get to make a Doom bot when that happens, which is so dope. Like, that's a great 10 points. So 185 points now. Or 260 points if you want to do double Jason, which is great, strong. So I am totally cool with the way they did uh, Reed Richards. I'm glad they didn't just let Galactus be free reign. The fact that he has to take up 100 points of your build, solid. I'm like, you know what, WizKids, that is fair enough. I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. Now, maybe when I lose to it a million times in the next three months, I won't feel that way. But I don't really care. Right now, at the, at the time of this recording, I think they did pretty solid with it. So I'll give them a pat on the back with the way they made uh, all yeah. that work. I so agree. It's pretty cool. So I like Dr. Richards, and I'm excited to play more Earth X. I love Earth X, so any excuse to put an Earth X figure on my team, I am happy for. Yeah, and he's got we... some solid damage dealing as well. He's got like yes. some Tensai. Oh, and... yeah, by himself? Yeah, absolutely. We're about an hour in, so I'm going to nix news in the butt here so we can play a, a solid game of Bad Samaritan. Sound good, guys? Sure. Okay. Simeon, give me that, that sweet, sweet intro. Bad Samaritan coming at you. Uh, sorry, Simi, I know you want to talk about Franklin, but I just don't want the show to get too long here, and it's pretty late at night. So, he gets but big. anyways, that's what he does. He does get big. Good old Franklin. <laughs> 70 points. Gets big. So, Bad Samaritan is a Hero Clicks guessing game where I have three figures in front of me, and I, myself, am on Team Calder. Simeon and Jonah are on a team trying to guess which figures I'm talking about. Each round, they will get clues 1 through 20, the last four being free plays. Uh, well, really, the last three being free plays, with number 20 being any two clues for free, which aren't free plays, but whatever. Uh, you'll get to choose them. So, uh, basically, you'll get one clue each round about the figure, and then you'll try to guess the figure that round. If you get it wrong, we'll move on to round two. You'll get another clue. You'll try to use your detective skills with the first two clues. If you get that round wrong, you'll go to round three, the third and final round for a figure. And once you have three clues, if you still can't figure out what the figure is, I will get a point. And if you guess it at any point in time, uh, Simeon, independent of Jonah, will get a point, and then Jonah, independent of Simeon, will get a point. So if you guess, you get your own point. You don't. You're, you're still working together to try to figure out what it is, but um, you will each only get one point for your guess. We're gonna play three rounds, and if we somehow tie, I have a tiebreaker, which is an object instead of a figure. All figures have to be modern age, and that is really the only caveat for Bad Samaritan. So Simeon, one through twenty. Uh, give me a number, and I will give you the clue for it here. First number is the number eight. Number eight is going to be improved movement or targeting. <laughs> this character does not have any. <laughs> uh, good clue to start us off with. Yes. Uh, so it actually isn't as bad as it sounds, because that nixes almost all, like, uh, Spider-Mans and most all, like, Daredevils and Black Panthers and stuff like that. Like, oh wait, improved targeting, right? Not improved. No improved movement or targeting. So yeah, it nixes all of those. Um, also, anyone that would like be able to shoot through, like, hindering or blocking. So uh, people, like the espionage trait people, also no-go. Um, so, with that being said, I have no clue what this could be. Uh, I'm just going to give a, a big ol' like swing and a miss with Batman because there's a few of him out there now. And I'm sure there one of them. There's a few. <laughs> yeah, well, it's got to not have improved movement or targeting. All right, we have one vote for Batman. Uh, Jonah, what is your guess? I want to I want to say Alex Wilder. Okay, so we got one for Batman locked in, one for Alex Wilder locked in. It is going to be and neither of those. Uh, clue number two. That'll be number seven. Number seven is going to be generic keyword. This character doesn't have any. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> so this this should like actually narrow it down. 
but in my brain it does not because yeah, a lack, of, a lack of information surprisingly is not information for me. Um, so no generic keyword would mean like they're not a soldier. They're like they're definitely like a team player. They're like a they're an Avenger or they're a bad guy or something. But they're yeah. not like a as well. Um, man, and that that really does not help because I can't for the life of me ever remember whether or not a character has a generic keyword. Unless it's a character I use. Uh, so I'm also I'm just going to throw another wild guess to the wind and pick a character that I think probably has targeting because that's really the best clue that I've got right now. I'm going to say Medusa. All right. One vote for Medusa. Jonah, what is your guess? Um... Yeah, this one is this one is definitely hard. Um, I think the thing that could help us win this one this round would be trait, because there's no amount of information you could give us right now that would actually like narrow it enough to guess them. Yeah. Um, And a reminder for everybody, uh, since we are recording June 28th, July 1st hasn't happened yet, which means everything from now, that's like Just League Unlimited Black Widow, to Elseworlds is legal for this guessing. Will, this will be the hardest uh, game. This will be the hardest game of Bad Samaritan for uh, at least another year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonah, don't make me put up a timer here. I know I'm just it's, gonna... it's difficult. It is difficult. Yeah, uh, why not? Um, let's just say Thor, I guess. <laughs> say Thor? Yeah. There's a lot of Thors, yeah. All right. Well, one for Benusa, one for Medusa, one for Thor. It is going to be neither of those. <laughs> Figure number one, round three of clues. Let's get that final clue here, boys. See if we can uh, take it home. Clue is going to be number 14. Number 14 is going to be opening attack power. This character has telekinesis. Okay. Uh, so this actually could be, I mean, you could do like Lieutenant Kyle. Um, that is a, that's a Star Trek figure. I doubt he has a generic keyword because psychic is no longer a generic keyword. I think uh, there's some characters in the uh, Captain Marvel movie set too that, that have TK. You gotta be careful with that though, because uh, there's a lot of like warrior thrown around for like the scrolls and stuff. Yeah, but I don't re- I don't remember anyone in those sets to be honest. Uh, I think I think there was a uh, Cree guy that had TK in that set, but I can't remember his name. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Lieutenant Kyle because that was my first thought. And I doubt he has any keywords or improved targeting. Um, okay, Lieutenant Kyle for Simeon locked in. I'll throw Jonah. out some other ones that I think of. Uh, some mm. still modern TK guys. Uh, Voyager has cosmic, so that's no. Also improved movement, I think. So also no. It's not Magneto. Magneto, yeah, he probably has some generic keyword, I would imagine. Maybe not. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of. Um. Isn't there one from uh, Secret Wars Battle World that was like one of the runaways? Is... Uh, like Chase Stein, maybe? Does he have... Or No, it'd be like Nico Minoru, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of... Oh, Founder. Uh, no, she is Mystical. Mm. Maybe the Fast Forces one? Sister Grimm. 
No, she has uh, she has Quake. I'm loving this. I'm loving it more because it's the first figure. <laughs> yeah. Um... I think Magneto's a solid guess because we've got we're still we still have XXS, um, and we've got all of Dark Phoenix. So there's a couple. Like there's a decent sized amount of uh, magnetos out there. Yeah, I was uh, I was looking at the magnetos. I think the prime one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with magneto, the the prime one from uh, XXS. Uh, if you vote for magneto, it's just gonna cover magneto oh, okay. across the board, so don't worry about it. Uh, okay. We have one vote for magneto, one for Lieutenant Kyle. It is gonna be one point to Simeon Bruce with Lieutenant Kyle. I knew Calder couldn't stay away from the trick. He's been watching Yeah, it. I actually thought that was going to get past you. That TK really sunk me, I got to say. Pretty livid about that. That any, time. Yeah, any team that I build that needs a solid TK and I like throw theme to the wind, he was on all of my Vulture I, builds. Yeah, that's the worst part. Yeah. Is that, like He's a good Star Trek piece. I only have four of them, and he's obviously because he's sidestep TK or whatever. I, I don't like Starfleet, obviously. I but uh, I was hoping I would get this one past you guys. I knew it would be tough to get past Simeon. Yeah, uh, he really he really saved me on the train map yeah. because you uh, there's that elevated. So that's that TK saved me from uh, having to take an action one turn. Fantastic. Well, it's going to be round uh, – sorry, round two. Give it up. Or figure two. Uh, figure two, round one. Excuse me. First clue is going to be number nine. Number nine is going to be Top Dial Stats. This character has nine speed, ten attack, seventeen defense, three damage, and sorry, seven range. Nine attack, three damage. Nine, ten, seventeen, three. Nine, ten, seventeen, three. Speed, seven attack, range. defense. That's damage. yeah, that's super, super basic. Um, I'll throw out Iron Man because. Like that's just the the most generic uh, set of stats. the The range is a little bit higher than average, but average range is like six or five, so seven's really not that crazy. I'd say if they have nine speed, they have to have like either I'd say running shot or I'd say sidestep. So they they could either be that or they could be like a support piece or something. I'd I'd say Doctor Strange. Going for Iron Man and Doctor Strange locked in. It is going to be neither of those next round. All right, figure two, round two. Number 11 is going to be the second. Number 11 is going to be name of trait. Dang, this is the only one that I didn't want you to get uh, with this character. Uh, That is going to be Enraged Chaco's Hunt for the name of the trait. Oh, oh man. I don't know. I don't know. What's it called? Enraged? Enraged Chaco's Hunt. Enraged Chaco's Hunt. Jonah, yeah. I'm going to punch you. I, I think there might be an Ellie that was recent mm. released with uh, mm-hmm. maybe like Despero mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. was it Batman? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of it, though. Yeah, that's probably a good guess. I I have no idea. Who are you guessing, J- J- Jonah? Despero, I think his name is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll go with Batman out of that. Ellie said. <laughs> uh, All right. Really? Yeah, yeah. We're on clue two. Okay. We'll go to clue uh, going three. for Despero and Batman. It is going to be neither of those. <laughs> Figure two, round three. All right. Yes. Clue number, clue number 14 again. Clue number 14 is going to be uh, opening attack power. That's going to be precision strike. Mm. Mm. Ah. Hmm. Do you want to know the name? Enraged. Because it doesn't matter. Do you want to know the name Enraged. of the precision strike there, guys? Is that is that going to help you out, <laughs> Jonah? Um. Yeah, give us a free clue, Calder. Okay. We're struggling here. X-ray vision to search for the stolen Chacos. 
is Precision Strike. Mm. Oh, I know Chacos in comics are usually like like Oreo cookie type uh, things, but those are trademarked. I think there's a character that likes them. Could be like Booster Gold, maybe? Uh, I know it's a DC guy, but I'm... I'm yeah, that's what I'm looking at. You're not looking at anything, Jonah, because HC Realms is prohibited for use of this game. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're just you're just thinking of something. Yeah. I'm looking around in my head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. Take your time, guys. Take, yeah. take your time. Precision. I, yeah, I don't know any booster gold that has precision strike though. Yep, that's the that's the tough part. Yeah. Okay, that's true. It's got to be a DC guy that likes uh, cookies. Um, Maybe like a Superman? Yeah, yeah like a he... Superman type, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's not Superman. I know he watches his carbs, so it's not him. Uh, no, maybe uh, a Flash, because there's a lot of Flashes that have Precision Strike. That's true. At nine speed. Uh, that is a common combo with the Flash. Um, and he is a snackaholic. Um, I'm gonna say the Flash. Are you? Mm, yeah, Jonah. The Flash yeah. locked in. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess I'll throw one out there with the uh, maybe a uh, Martian Manhunter. <laughs> Ah, all right. So we have the Flash. Really, are you guys really think it's gonna be a DC figure, huh? All right. I don't. I don't remember Chaco's in Marvel. I've read a lot of Marvel. One for the Flash. <laughs> one for Martian Manhunter. It is. It is gonna be Martian Manhunter. Jonah, I next time I see you in person, I'm I'm going to punch you so hard, <laughs> so hard in the face. I do not care. I know I I know I normally say that. This is not a threat. This is a promise. <laughs> I I really <laughs> wanted to tie it up. I really I I know up. you did, Simeon. and you tried so hard to tie it up. Jonah, <laughs> the flash, like it'd have been different. This guy actually does have hypersonic speed top dial. I get it. Precision strike. X, yeah. X, but it says it's X-ray vision, Jonah. It says X-ray vision. When does the Flash have X-ray vision? <laughs> I honestly, I yeah. To be fair, I forgot about that part as well. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, that's okay. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm so. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, Simeon got two points, and it does not matter that we have a, a like a third. We're gonna do the third figure. But I'm just so mad. I'm I'm done. Okay. Simeon got. I'm two like. Points. I'm like. Well, who, what other, like, alien would, like, or something, I don't know, who would, like... You just like, said uh, alien! You just said alien! Bro, there's two DC aliens. <laughs> I know there's more DC fans. Calm down. Just calm down. No, there's, there's Martian Manhunter and Superman, dog. No, you got, uh, you got Supergirl, um... Doesn't I just matter. can't believe you've never seen the Martian Manhunter Chaco yeah, Cookie Throne sculpt. I can't sculpt. believe you've never seen that figure. And That's right, yeah. You let it get past you. Which one is that? that? Is that the... It's the LE that came with Batman and Despero. Oh. Well, no, uh, I'm talking about the like the older sculpt where he's like sitting on a throne of cookies. Oh, that one too. I can't remember what set it came out of, but it's a pretty it's a pretty famous like hero click sculpt. It's a uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool one. But all right, regardless, my my mental state is gone. I'm <laughs> round three, round three. <laughs> First clue is number six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, number six. <laughs> number okay, six is the named time. keyword. This character is an Avenger. Wow. All right. Really lowers it down. Lieutenant Kyle, Martian Manhunter. So we got John Jones, Lieutenant Kyle. Uh, I think the theme is like space. Um, so I'm going to say Voyager. That's an Avenger. Mm. Yeah. I guess for Voyager. Um, Space Avengers. Mm. Don't let Simeon throw you off. It could yeah, be anything. that might not be the theme. You don't know if there's an actual theme or not. There could just be no theme. I sometimes do do a theme though. Uh, let's let's do Captain America. I mean, obviously, since you like him, you know. Right. One for Captain America. One for Voyager. It is going to be neither of those. Round two. 
<laughs> Figure number three, round two. What's the clue, my man? The clue for number two is going to be number 18. Number 18 is going to be a free play, which means I can tell you anything you want to know about this figure besides name or real name. So that is point value, set, significant appearance, number of clicks, rarity, slash set number, named keyword, generic keyword, improved movement, targeting, top dial, stats, name of a special power, name of a trait, any special combat symbols, opening, movement, attack, defense, and damage. And those are all your, your guesses that you could have for a free play potential. And I can read them to you again slower if you want me to. Well, Jonah, this is only... This is only Clue 2, and there's yeah. quite a few Marvel sets still in modern right now. So I was, if we yeah. narrow it by set, I think. I was, well, I was thinking that there's a lot of Captain Americas in almost every Marvel set, though. And there's there's one of each rarity. I know in, uh, uh, what which set is it? I think it's uh, either Earth-X or, no, it was Secret Wars Battle World where they had all the shifting focus ones. And then I know there's the chase one, there's the rarer one. Um, I, I was thinking rarity, but we can do set. Do you want to do rarity, Jonah? Yeah, I'll go rarity. That also will narrow it down to a fairly significant margin. And we've still got one clue left. Yeah, that's, that's fine. All right. All right. Rarity of this figure. So when you do choose rarity, you'll get set number as well. It's going to be 018 and this figure is an uncommon. 018 uncommon. So that's going to take out the Black Widow set as well as the Justice League Unlimited set. Um also it's an Avenger. <laughs> yes. Yes. And there's Crimson Avenger. He could have the key. Mm, no. Nope. I don't think so. Um so um, 018 we're looking at an uncommon or a really high common, I guess, but most likely a common. Yeah, me. I'm trying to think. There was a common Iron Man from uh, ABPI at like Hypersonic. There's also the uncommon one. Yeah, um, I know. I know it's not Voyager because you're. Yeah, you already said that. Why am I? I think she's like zero one four or something. It's been a while since I've looked at it, but yeah. Yeah, well, you already guessed her, so it's, it <laughs> doesn't matter. That's, that's true. <laughs> um, I'll throw out the Hulk because I think between ABPI, Secret Wars, and Earth X, there's a there's enough Hulks out there. AI, yeah, ABPI, AI, Earth X. That's like the three Avengers sets. I'm gonna yeah. I'll just throw out Hulk. I think there's a an uncommon one with Avengers. One guess for Hulk. I'll Jonah. I'll I'll do the the outside of the box plan. I'll go with Black Panther because I know there's right. a, a couple in the AI. There's a Hulk, yeah, one there's for a lot. Black Panther. It is gonna be. And neither of those third figure third. <laughs> Last clue is. Number seven. Number seven is going to be generic keyword. This character has the armor keyword. Ooh, Iron generic. Man. <laughs> mm. One vote for Iron Man. Iron Man locked, is solid. Locked in. Uh, E-Tree definitely does not have the Avengers keyword. He might also not have the armor keyword. Uh, uh, E-Tree does have the armor keyword. Does he? Okay. So I, I built a team with him for Popper. It was with, like, uh, Juggernaut. Iron Man, maybe a Thor. I'll say Thor, yeah. Okay, so we have one for Iron Man, one for Thor. It is going to be... Whatever, Simeon's got three points or something, I guess. Yeah. yeah we did it, that's, ladies uh, and gentlemen. Wow. Yeah, Simeon's back on the map. Uh, that's zero eighteen. Thor, but it's Eric Masterson Thor, which is uh, pretty clever, just saying. Oh, he's clever. got the armor uh, keyword? Yeah, he's got the armor keyword. I thought that oh. would have threw you off, but uh, <laughs> maybe think Avengers and armor be Iron Man. Not really. Uh, well, it's because really I, uh, I was thinking Lieutenant Kyle. Yeah, shut up. I was thinking of that episode of Star Trek. Yeah. Let me go into this episode because they, yeah. uh, they go to like a pseudo Asgardian no, kind no, of. No, 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 so, no. No Star Trek. Excuse me, no Star Trek! <laughs> Anyways. All right. That was 
uh, Bad Samaritan, the game that I used to enjoy. <laughs> I had fun. Let's, we'll still play it on every road trip. Don't worry. That yes, we will. Yes, we will. And you know what? Simeon won't be there. So exactly. That's, that's slightly better. Get Simeon. Uh, all right. So sorry. That really sorry, guys. Uh, it just really took the wind out of my sails. I just I can't let Simeon be happy in his life, and I'm just I'm real bummed that 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 happened. So moving on, let's go ahead and jump into the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens. Community Tuesdays, we asked, what non-Fantastic Four slash Spider-Man characters are you excited to see in the Fantastic Four set? Kind of as like a joke, you know, like how they were filming the set with non-Fantastic Four characters. Um, but I guess really the joke's on us because the set list came out and now most people are just kind of bummed. So I'm just going to read two answers. Um, the two answers that aged the worst. That's what I'm going for. That's what I'm doing. Sound good, Simeon? Do you, do you catch my drift, buddy? The two answers that have aged the worst that we've seen now that we've seen the set list. First up, uh, we're going to go with... Whew, Ronnie says Molecule Man, since he finishes the Battle World collection. Sure would have been sure would have been pretty cool if he was in this set, Ronnie. I'll just read another one. Ben, ben Jones says uh, Psycho Man... He was last clicked in Secret Invasion, which is such an old set that me and Simeon are playing it in Thursday Throwdown. So a character who hasn't been made in a very, very, very long time. Sure would have been great if they made an appearance in this set, unlike, I don't know, Hulk, Robbie Ray as Ghost Rider. Two Hulks. Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> She-Hulk. Red Hulk. So, She-Hulk. Well, there is no She-Hulk in this set, actually. Most of the... Uh... Most of the answers that we got to this t- Community Tuesday question was in reference to, too. like, the image you posted. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which was uh, about... Salty, uh, salty butthurt people, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people looking at the backs of cards. Uh, so I'll just read the only ones that I have that aren't in reference to that. Uh, Jeff Poyer says, I haven't seen any figures that aren't strongly associated with the Fantastic Four or Spider-Man yet. I'd like Power Pack to be in the set mainly for mm. the benefit of my 11-year-old. Mm. So, yes, sadly, no power pack. Uh, this was posted before we got the full set list. Um, but maybe sure would have been in great future sets. Power pack. Yeah, it would have been, been great. Yep. I'm sure the power pack are such big, you know, members of the X-Men that they'll show up in the X-Men set. It's That's why it was so important to put Wolverine in this Fantastic Four set. Yeah, I'm sure. Th- as a... Yep starter figure and a separate yep. sculpt for a super rare. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Mhm. Yep. Very important. All right, so I mean just go ahead and read one more and then we'll just move on to uh, Jedi Legends here clicks. <laughs> Tip of the week. All right. Uh let's see. Matthew Omar says anything that is tied to the Earth X series, mm. which I agree would have been real cool to get some more Earth X than I mean, we got we got some and I'm sure that there'll be future ones. We're really, just like, be, it's really an Earth-X drizzle. It'd be cool point. to, like, really round out a... Especially when it's, like, Earth-X Kingdom Come, like, something like that. It'd be really cool to round it out in modern all at the same time. Yes. Rather than, like, it spanning, like, four or five years of collecting. Which, I mean, it's still fine. I can still play them in Golden Age. I'm not going to complain too much. But uh, when you call a set Earth-X, uh, make it Earth-X. All right, fantastic. Now let's go ahead and jump on into Jedi Legends Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. If you get the chance, look up the sequence card, some useful and simple pointers. So let's just go over the attack sequence before we finish. It is determine targets, calculate the attack total, determine the hits, calculate the damage dealt, the damage sequence, the knockback se- sequence, and then, uh, then the uh, officially the attack will resolve. So there's good seven steps. Now it says note: damage from knockback is separate to an attack that caused uh, some earlier damage. He said I'll likely put a gif in the comments. Um, he says we could do more damage that way. So if you take knockback, whatever, it doesn't yeah. doesn't matter what the damage was originally. Knockback damage is separate damage, baby. So. So cool, so cool. One of my uh, one of my favorite some... figures to do this with mm. is uh, 
Mm. The Witch Queen Le Fay, who starts with every speed power except stealth and Earthbound, Earthbound neutralized. neutralized. So she has access to Force Blast and Pulse Wave and Running Shot and Sidestep. And if you add some WWE, she's got Nimble and other stuff like that. I think Slingshot might be a speed power. Um, but anyhow, you can Running Shot, Pulse Wave, and then for the duration of the knockback, they have no powers on their dial unless they're protected Pulse Wave. So you can not only knock back charge and combat reflex pieces, but you can also deal them damage from like the one they would take against hitting a wall or the two from falling. Very nice. Very solid. And that is Jedi Legends tip of the week. So that's it. That wraps up the show. I already did a Patreon plug earlier. I'm just going to throw it out there. Check it out. We are giving away a Cosmic Clash starter and... We also have these sweet action tokens. If you support us on Patreon already, let me know what action tokens you want. I'm going to be sending two months' worth of uh, Patreon stuff uh, out uh, at the end of the month here, July 1st. So be ready to receive all that all that goodness. All that goodness, ladies and gentlemen. We are on new platforms. Uh, obviously, if you're listening to this, you're listening to this no matter how. But we went ahead and threw up on... Up on the Spotify and up on the Stitcher. I'm in Stitches just thinking about it. The podcast. Podcast now on. That's right. Spotify and Stitcher. So if you had some friends that you said, hey, man, check out the podcast. They're like, I don't have an iPhone and I, I use Stitcher and Spotify. Well, now they no longer have an excuse not to listen because it's there. You're welcome. Thank you, Simeon, uh, for getting my button gear. It was very simple for us to do it. And um, I, was yeah. being, I was being lazy because I'm like, turned out. What kind of loser uses uh, Stitcher and Spotify? Now, if you're using that right now, please. Well, I'm just saying that because I know Simeon does. Yes. (laughs) But if you're listening to it through Stitcher and Spotify, thank you for listening. You're not a loser. Simeon, however, is yes. Uh, But thank you guys so much for listening. Check out our podcast there. And if you just prefer using them as platforms, then by all means. Uh, Just just so you know, the podcast is there. I want to stress the YouTube channel. I'm not really a YouTuber. But I've really been enjoying making YouTube videos. I like podcasting. Podcasting is awesome. But YouTube videos let me flex uh, more creative muscles in a way that I really enjoy it. So I I really should I want everybody that listens to our show to go and watch our YouTube videos. I think the Thursday Throwdown series is awesome. If you love watching really cool Golden Age battles that you get an influence with your vote. I do unboxings. I kind of take a, a Max Mofo thing where he opens a pack of Pokemon to try to get a rare Charizard. I'm going to open a pack of Supernova to try to get a zombie every time I do an unboxing. And I'm going to have a Black Widow boxing coming up this week, unboxing coming up this week. Um, I like to have fun with my unboxings. I don't just blah, blah, blah. I open up Hero Clicks. It's, it's just it's fun. And then I did a, a really cool unboxing for the Cosmic Class Stutter set, which I think should be like the next big Hero Clicks meme. I think everybody should watch that. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Um, I had to make the ultimate sacrifice in order to do that, so I really hope uh, people enjoy that. I would love that video to be over like 300 views. It's at like 70 something right now, which is pretty weak sauce. We got 500 subscribers, baby. Go check out our YouTube channel. Go check out our really cool YouTube comment. If you like Mr. Clicks Flicks, if you like uh, happy little hero clicks style content, we are still Dial H style content. It's just in YouTube form. So if you already watch YouTube videos, check out our sweet YouTube videos. Check yeah. out our Dial H content because it's still the Dial H feel in YouTube format formation. Ooh, just, chef's kiss. Just, it's beautiful. I have nothing else to plug. Simeon, go ahead. Maximum effort, minimum editing is uh, the Dial H format in case you weren't That's aware. pretty much correct, yes. Um, so with that, I'm just going to say... Uh, if you're still looking for an ace, you can find her on CoolStuffInc.com, currently on sale for $17.99. And you can throw in that nice. Dial 5 uh, code to get an even more discount. Uh, Jonah here, who participated in our tournament, he has $50 to Cool Stuff. So he can just straight up buy it for free because he's got some credit. But with that, Cool Stuff Inc., is our sponsor, and you can find cool stuff in stock every day from the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products to uh, you know all those uh, those goodies that are going to be pre-order soon. Um, there's a lot of stuff to check out, so check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. All right, Jonah, is there anything you want to shout out before you go? Oh man, um, not really, man. I, I just want to. 
you know, leave it off there. Had a good time, and yeah. All right, fantastic. Well, like I say every week, guys, happy trails. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.